2,147,483,647 by Mega Cosmo. We will rescue you, he had been told from Earth. We do not yet have the technology to catch up with you, but when we do, we will come and get you. He had been in a space station held at the end of a space elevator, far enough away for one G to be produced by the centrifugal force from the Earth's rotation alone, when the tether had snapped. Having been swung so far from Earth, the space station had had enough speed to escape the solar system. He had been the only survivor of the accident. He was traveling so fast that rescue was impossible. He had only one option, to make his way to the cryopreservation room, say goodbye to his old life, and freeze himself. That was his last memory. It was loud when he woke up, very loud. Beneath all of the alarms, he could hear the sound of metal grinding, shearing, and vibrating. It was not what he wanted to be waken up to. He thought he saw a figure in the room, but felt sick when he realized it was just a spacesuit held by a small maintenance robot. Nobody was there to rescue him. It had been the computer that had woken him up. Put on the spacesuit now, said the computer. For some reason, the robot must have dragged the spacesuit from the airlock. Something bad was happening. Really bad. He checked the side of his chamber to see the date. The day and month were both blank. The year read 2,147,483,647. He felt sick again. The number he recognized from when he did programming at school. It was the largest 32-bit integer. The display would not go higher than this. He was over 2.1 billion years in the future, and it could be any amount more than that. Many more billions of years could have passed. Put on the spacesuit now, he obliged. He then tried to head to the control room to see what was happening, but the door was locked. Put yourself in the brace position, said the computer. The rest of the station is gone. This room will soon be breached. Put yourself in the brace position. Gone? This couldn't be true. He looked through the small window in the door, but it was just black. He tried shining a torch through, still black. He wasn't quite sure what to make of it. He couldn't see stars through the door, at least. Under all of the alarms, the sound of metal was getting louder. The lights flickered. Put yourself in the brace position, blared the computer again. He was trapped in this room and started to think he was in real danger, so he obliged. He brought his knees up to his chest and placed his hands over his head. He tried to steady himself so he floated as far away from any other object as he could. A new alarm started, signaling that the cryopreservation room had indeed suffered a breach, and less than a second later, the room was torn apart. It had suddenly gone silent, so he lifted his head to see what had just happened. The computer was right. The rest of the station was gone. It had just been the cryopreservation room literally floating through space. No air recycling, just what was left when the computer sealed the room for him. The room was in two pieces. Only one side briefly still had some lights, but after a few seconds, that went too. He looked around him. He was floating freely in outer space, but there were no stars to help him get his bearing. It was black. There was nothing he could do except float. This must be it, he thought. Hours passed. It was so dark all he could see was the noise of his retinas, desperately searching for a signal that wasn't there. Slowly he relaxed into a spread eagle position. This was a little odd as he had spent much time in zero gravity and this was not normally the position relaxed or sleeping people take. Then, slowly, he felt himself being pulled into this position. He pulled his arms in and the tug receded, but when he stretched them out he could feel them being pulled. He knew what was happening even if he had trouble believing it. He knew what had destroyed the space station, he knew what was now trying to pull him apart, and he knew why there were no stars. It was the end of the universe the big rip. The biggest things went first. Galaxies, stars, planets, moons, then ships, and his space station, and now him. He went back into the brace position. This kept him as small as possible. More hours passed and he felt the tug return, pulling harder and harder. Why hadn't humanity rescued him? Had something wiped him out? Or did they just not care? He was only in his early thirties. Was he the last human alive? He realized if he held himself in that position, it would be a painful death, so he slowly reached for the control panel on his chest, careful not to let his legs go loose and be pulled so hard he couldn't pull them back. He tapped at a button, and slowly the quiet hissing of the spacesuit stopped. No more new air. He choked, but he knew this was the least painful way to go right now. He choked more and fell faint. He 
tried his best to stay in the brace position all the while. The tug was getting harder. He slowly felt consciousness slip away from him. Then, a sudden light startled him. He felt gas rushing around him, but it was too bright to see anything. Found him, he heard. Grab him, now! Then the light disappeared, along with the floating man. Humanity had rescued him. Then slowly, the universe ended.